What's going on guys? Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. So I want to answer a couple of questions, specifically one question that I've gotten a number of times from a number of different guys and girls out there about modern gutter fighting. What is our philosophy here specifically regarding striking with a closed fist versus an open hand? How are we any different from what original OG Fairburn gutter fighting and Fairburn himself would have suggested. What was his philosophy? What is our philosophy when it comes to striking with a closed fist versus open hands? So let's jo jump into this. Let's dive into this. I'll explain what Fairburn's philosophy was and what our philosophy in modern gutter fighting is and how it's very similar but slightly different as well. So obviously, Fairburn... If you watch the old black and white Fairburn stuff, if you read his books, he was pretty big on striking with open hands. Chops to the throat, to the filchum of the nose, to the bridge of the nose, to the carotid arteries, clavicles, obviously open hand palm strikes, okay? Combat slaps into the ear, into the jaw even works. Right, we know these open hand strikes were preferred by Fairburn, by the original OG gutter fighting system. Also, I had the opportunity to talk to Bill Wolf at one of his battle schools that I took. And he was explaining to me how Pat O'Neill, William Fairburn, Applegate, they had the philosophy that the Germans back in the day, they had those big steel helmets that resemble the helmets that we were issuing until recently, the ones that cover your ears. And if you were to go and try to throw a hook and hit the side of one of those helmets, you break your damn hand. So that's another reason why Fairburn really wanted these guys to train open hand palm strikes. Eye gouges were a substitution for closed fist jabs from boxing. So these things are all great and they all work. How do we at Modern Gutter Fighting take that philosophy and improve upon it for you guys who do box, for you guys who do a lot of MMA, like myself, for you guys who do a lot of Muay Thai, again, like myself. How do we go ahead and make sure that we're training correctly? Because I'll tell you this, and I've gotten this question a number of different times and a number of different comments and emails. Guys have watched our Warrior Basic course on gutter striking, even on Warrior uh, ground fighting. Ground, commando ground fighting, and you've seen me advocate open hand strikes, but also seen me strike with a closed fist. And I've gotten back to a number of you guys, and a number of you guys who I haven't yet gotten back to, this should answer the question, is that, look, I do a lot of MMA, okay? I'm always constantly striking and boxing with closed fists. So sometimes, when I'm in the middle of a technique, I'm that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to strike with a closed fist right to the cervical spine, right down into the nuts, okay, right into the throat, into the chin, right? I'm going to throw jabs, not finger jabs, but I'm going to throw closed fist jabs, okay? That's just how I'm used to fighting. I'm a combat athlete, and for all of you guys and girls out there who are also combat athletes, we don't have any problem with you throwing closed hand strikes, but we recommend anyone who is a newer warrior who is just learning how to dominate in a street fight, in a battlefield situation, we recommend that you train with open hands. Number one, it's really important that you preserve your hands. Your hands are your, one of your biggest assets in this fight. You don't want to have an asset get taken out in the middle of a fight, all right? It could be bad. Yeah, you're, got, you, you're going to have a bunch of adrenaline running through you. Will you feel it? Probably. Will you feel the full effects of it immediately? Probably not but it will hinder your ability to grab, to manipulate, okay? To grab clothing even. Certainly to grab a weapon, to grab a weapon away from somebody, to fend off a weapon with fine motor skills. Not that we recommend a lot of fine motor skills to begin with, but you want your hands to be working. Not to mention the fact that if you fuck your hands up in a street fight, trust me, I know this from experience, then you're not gonna be able to train as well as you'd like to in the months following, right? And that sucks, because we all want to train. So if you're a newer warrior, I would absolutely recommend, 
especially, go check out on GutterFightingSecrets.com. Check out our Warrior Basic course, all right? That's going to teach you all of our philosophy about warrior stance, movement, footwork, blocking, all of that stuff. It's just the foundations that are so important, not only to gutter fighting, but modern gutter fighting as well. So we here have a philosophy that if it's not broken, don't fix it, number one. And taking what is useful, absorbing that, and throwing away everything that's useless, to quote Bruce Lee. That is our philosophy. That is our whole jam here. We keep modern gutter fighting deliberately, stupidly simple. So that when you need these things, they're available to you. You don't have to think, oh, well, is, am I blocking like this? Am I blocking like this? No. It's, we have like three basic blocks, four if you count the body blocks, all right? There's like four basic blocks there. That's what makes a boxer a lot more deadly than somebody who's been studying Wing Chun per se, or Ji Kwon Do, right? Because a boxer has what, four, five, six, depending on how many combinations you, know, you wanna count, how many strikes, quote unquote, you wanna count. They've got like six to eight different punches that they need to master. And so that's what makes a boxer so deadly. And that's what makes our system, frankly speaking, so effective, so deadly, so efficient, is there's a limited number of techniques and a limited number of ways that you can put those together. And they are immediately available for you to grasp and learn and program into your muscle memory. But once they're there, they're there. You're immediately going to be able to fight like somebody who's had a lot more experience. And that's our whole training philosophy and why we really are succeeding so much out there in the field right now because there's so much bullshit, frankly speaking. There's so many poor, poor, poor Krav Maga instructors out there teaching a bunch of bullshit and they've never even been in a street fight, let alone an MMA fight. They don't do a lot of sparring, all right? We're different. I've been in a, <laughs> I've been in a few fights in my time, I'll tell you like that. And I do a lot of MMA. I do a lot of sparring on the ground, standing up, all of that, okay? And I have a decent amount of experience to give you guys when it comes to what actually works and what does not. Like I always say, if it works in the street, it's going to work in the cage. And if it works in the cage, it will work in the street. But if it doesn't work in the cage, it's not necessarily more than likely going to work in the street. If it doesn't work in the street, you get what I'm saying. All right. It's plain and simple. So going back to the original train of thought, the original question here is our philosophy on punching with a closed fist is, hey, if you're a boxer, if you're used to doing that, do it because you're more than likely going to fall back on it in a street fight, in a battlefield situation. You're just more than likely going to do it. Be aware of this, though. If you are a soldier, if you are an active duty guy, right? If you are even law enforcement, all right? What do a lot of guys wear? They wear plates and plate carriers, right? Striking into a plate carrier with a closed fist is really going to damage your fist. Then what do you need to worry about? Weapons manipulation, weapons retention, all of that, right? So that's something that you do need to be aware of. Helmets, obviously, as well. Other type of armor, other type of gear and equipment that you might encounter on a terrorist, whatever stripe of terrorist that is, right? On an active shooter. These guys are, <laughs> they have access to equipment, to body armor. So you do need to be aware of that. Is that striking with a closed fist, potentially, could get you into trouble, but you're probably going to fall back on it anyway. If that's what you're always doing, is you're always boxing and you're always grappling, you're going to box and grapple. All right? If you're always throwing eye rakes, if you're always throwing chin jabs and chops, more than likely that's what you're going to fall back on doing. So train the way that you expect to fight, and you're going to fight the way that you train. That's our whole philosophy here. Now, I'm going to give you a quick caveat on this as well. If you are a boxer, if you are a Muay Thai fighter, if you are an MMA guy, what do we always do? We always wrap our hands, generally speaking, when we train, when we fight. And we always have gloves on, especially, okay, if you're a boxer, you wear like 16-ounce gloves or thicker. <laughs> well, we get used to throwing some kind of shitty punches. We do. It's just the way of it, right? We get used to throwing punches at angles that if we don't have those gloves on, they're going to hurt our hands. They're going to break our hands. They're going to give us boxers fractures. Guys, I've had four or five boxers fractures in my, in my, in my life, okay? Like, they suck. When you get on the street, you start hitting, like, tops of heads and, hard bones and stuff like that 
you miss, you hit a concrete wall or something, like it's gonna happen, all right, where you're not, your hands are not protected. And if you always train with nice wraps and nice gloves, your hands are not gonna be as strong. So what we recommend is you go on the bag, take the wraps off, take the damn gloves off, and just wail on it, okay? Start slow. You don't wanna damage your hands and be out of training. All right, more than likely what's gonna happen is your first couple of times, um, you're gonna scrape your knuckles up. You're gonna get some blood on the bag, all right? Afterwards, put some antiseptic stuff on you, all right? Because you don't want any nasty shit from the gym. Do other guys a favor, spray down the bag, wipe it down, get your blood off there. Nobody wants your fucking blood on their bag, right? Bandage your hands if you need to. Wait, and then go back and do it again when your hands have healed up. Personally, I like to attack the bag as often as I possibly can without gloves on. Now, I've been doing it for years and years and years. I've also done a lot of hand strengthening stuff um, through the Iron Fist, Iron Palm methodology of Jeet Kune Do and all of that. And we, that's a great technique to do as well. Get a, get a bag, right? Some kind of either burlap sack or something like that. Fill it full of sand. Put marbles in it, okay? Don't crush your hands, guys. Go light at first. And you can watch videos on Iron Palms. If you want to see a video on that, let me know. Plop it down in the comments. I can put that together for you as well. My philosophy on that, guys. Go easy on it. No need to do it all the time. You don't want to give yourself arthritis or anything else. As martial artists, our bodies are prone to giving out as we get older. Okay? Progressively more and more. That's why keeping on training is so important. Because a body that doesn't move is going to become weak. A body that doesn't keep training and keep hardening itself is going to eventually become weak. All right, so we need to keep going, otherwise we might fall apart. But it's really important, guys, that we think about these things and that you take what I'm spitting out here as far as our philosophy here in modern gutter fighting and that you think about these things and don't just take it for doctrine, right? Work on it for yourself. Think about it. Meditate on it. Put it as part of your training routine. See if it works for you. If it doesn't, get rid of it. If it does, keep with it, right? And that's what we're all about here. I want to give you guys... Solid practical stuff, solid practical advice so that you can win, or plain and simple. We're not going into a combat situation to do anything except close with and destroy the enemy. And that's what this is all about. This is about closing with and destroying the enemy so that we can protect the weak. We can protect others and we can protect ourselves. So with that being said, guys, that is our philosophy here at Modern Gutter Fighting. It is our whole reason we exist to help you guys be victorious, stay safe out there in the streets, on the battlefield, whatever it may be. And I really deeply appreciate each and every one of you that watches these videos, that comments, that likes, that subscribes and shares, all of that. All of our loyal customers out there who have checked out gutterfightingsecrets.com, picked up any one of our courses. Guys, thank you so much for that. I really, really, really appreciate your purchase and i just want to make sure that you guys are training right all right so go check it out we got ground fighting for the street we got warrior basic course that is going to build you from the ground up all right we've got advanced striking we've got takedowns we've got everything out there and we're only adding more we're going to be about ready to deploy a solo training course here in the next month or so so i'm super thrilled about it i'm super excited to have you guys Continue following us here on YouTube and also check out our stuff over there. If you have any questions whatsoever, plop it in the comments down below. I will address each and every comment. I will also get back all the time to all of our guys and girls who email me at gutterfightingsecrets.com. Gutterfightingsecrets, or phew, you can do that, but you can also email me personally at gutterfightingsecrets at gmail.com. That's gutterfightingsecrets at gmail.com. For any questions that you have that are more in depth, wow, she's really hot. For any questions that you have that are more in depth, okay, that you don't want to put in the comment for whatever reason, send an email to us. I'll get back to you personally. If you don't want me to make a YouTube video about it, hey, we can chat. I'm always down to chat with a fellow warrior. With that being said, fellow warriors, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your service, for all of you guys out there who are in the military, civil service, all of that. And until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, mother flowers.